Welcome back to TwitchCon Amsterdam. You are joining us live in the Twitch Rivals Arena. Right now, the Tice Tavern is open for business. We're about to kick off the constructed finals with Tice himself and his sidekick, Dow. And we're just really, really excited to see what's going to happen in this best of three. But while we wait for Yala and Fano to get into game, I'd love to find out more about these players, Eric, and their style of play. Yeah, I mean, they're both old school Hearthstone players. They've been around since pretty much the beginning, but they've had very different roads along the way. Yala has been doubling down on that competitive play. Uh, one of the strongest players in Grandmasters over its entire run, uh, and culminating in a second, place a second place finish at the World Championships a couple years ago, which was a real heartbreak for him because everyone expected him to win. But taking that loss to Glor at the end was uh, it was a tough one, but I really think it shows his uh, high level. Of play. And we're going to get into game right now and hopefully see more high level of play. So, Tyson and Derek, take it away. And here we go. The first match, Derek, of the final of the Tice Tavern. Are you ready? Let's do Let's this. Let's go. On stage, man. Feels amazing. Got here the first game, and we see Fino queuing the Prestor Druid first, starting uh, with the extra life total at 40, having a quite weak opener. I mean, it's a lot of one drops, but that's not really what you're looking for when you play this, uh, this Druid deck yet. And you'll be glad to hear, Tice. It looks like the Shaman has been banned away from Fino, so you're not going to have to <laughs> calm your eyes by even looking at it. You're safe for now. I appreciate it. And there, directly the Lady Prestor draw for Fino being quite huge because you normally try to search for the Lady Prestor, but he doesn't even have to search. He's got it already. <laughs> Crowd clapping the trog on one. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I like the audience, guys. Let's go. <laughs> All right, jackpot ready to go for Yala. No tricksters in order to cheap, uh, cheat out those expensive spells that come out afterwards. But it's not a bad start, right? It's a good way to uh, at least start finding some answers to this early tempo from Fina. Yeah, and also he has the Shroud on three. If that Shroud can find the, um, the Trickster and oh, there is a Pyroblast book. There are so many shenanigans you can do with the Pyroblast if you get an, an extra copy of it or anything oh, yeah. and you start Pyroblasting. I mean, Pyroblast is huge, but I've got my eyes on that Chaos Cobra at the moment. Yeah. With Fino going nice and wide on the board, four damage of AoE is mm. exactly the kind of thing that Yala needs to pull this back, especially with all those trogs doubling up over and over again. These trucks are like so, so good for Fino. And here is having that one card that you really want now before the Lady Prestor turn. Yeah. It's the composting. That's what you are looking for. No, it's the perfect card because obviously at this point, mm -hmm. no real board space left to work with. So just mm -hmm. doubling down on that. Hopefully finding an innovate for next turn as well to go coin bait Lady Prestor. But it's just a dream start, right? Everything going Fino's way so far. I mean, it literally feels like an amazing game. Not even going for the dragons, but play, just playing here the composting. Con at least making sure you draw six cards is like, wow. And Jarl is still struggling, still not having the Shroud, or he played the Shroud but didn't pick up the Trickster, and now he's still not able to play any of the, the key spells yet. What do you reckon? Is it Ozumat this time? I don't think it's ever Ozumat, oh, man. I don't dude, think it ever on. is. <laughs> How sad. I mean, it's just so sad, but like also the, the Ozumat, like it never, in the Rogue perspective, you get it quite often, and it just yeah, never yeah. goes back in your pool, so it feels so, so weak. All right, so one interim turn here before Yala pops off with, as I said, that Chaos Nova. Fino maybe not quite aware of it yet because, as we said, he didn't go for the composting last turn. Uh, and so in the meantime, what is Yala looking to do, do you think? Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised about that play from Fino because he could get uh, punished here quite a bit by mm. the Trickster into an AoE and then your whole composting is just completely off the board. So yeah. maybe I, was, I would like to have just seen him playing that composting already last turn. Luckily, it's not the case for Jarl, and he's really, really struggling here to get anything going. Like, what are you doing here? Reconnons, Jackpot, just feels all a little bit off. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like spending the mana on Jackpot, maybe more so looking at the uh, Gone Fishing, just to have a bit more direct ability to choose exactly what you're looking for. Uh, but getting the Direwolf, or oh, sorry, the Alpha down as well, alongside the Null is, you know, a reasonable amount of tempo. Even after the AoE comes down, they'll still have a stealth afterwards as well. Yeah, and Jarlan now, I mean, I think he kind of has to read that uh, Fino doesn't have composting, so he's just purely looking at that turn 5 Chaos Nova. No matter what, I think he just wants to get that down. Yeah. So I'm even thinking, is he playing the Null here? Maybe he just sticks it around. Oh, you hold it back. Yeah, you go Chaos AOE. Nova into the, into the Null. I like it. Oh, look at that! No, and there is the goof. Fino. It's always goof and insta emote at all. Fino with the little smile. He just knows how important that is. Gets his body ready. 
We've seen him play like three games already today. I think he's hit Guff in every <laughs> single one of those. It's disgusting. It's true, it's great. If you hit the Guff, man, it feels good. But that's still, he didn't wrong. get that composting down, and that's yeah. still the way out for Jarla a little bit. Like now, with that uh, Chaos Nova here, it's gonna clear the board, and it's kind of, I mean, there are so many good dragons, so the chances he's gonna hit the good dragons now after the Lady Prestor are, are quite high. Lady Prestor being the card, transforming every minion in your deck into random dragons changing the cost and with all the one and two mana cards Fino is playing as minions they're now going to be one and two mana dragons so obviously we know things are still going good for Fino right he's got the press or drown his entire uh, down sorry his entire deck transformed into dragons what should Yarla's priorities be here how can he turn this pretty disastrous game around I mean the only big way for Yarla to win this is board like he needs to win the board the dragons are gonna have very strong effects but not very strong lines of stats so the way to win it here is gonna be like the board. And he's got the board now, so it's really gonna depend a bit on what Fino is hitting. If he's gonna hit Nosdormus, <laughs> it's fine. Oh, Ysera, not bad. You can get yourself some AoE uh, with Ysera Awakens. Even just a bit of tempo by dreaming one of these back to hand. Yeah, of course the best for Fino will be if he hits Alexstrasza, he can do A damage. With the Moonlit Guidance, he gets it twice, so it would be actually the game over. But this is still a very strong pickup. The five damage AoE is very, very strong here. and. For Fino, it's just about stabilizing the game for now. He wants to ramp up, he wants to make the game longer. He's 36 life, he's doing so, so fine, and he's gonna be ready to pick up so many strong dragons. All right, well, speaking of winning board, one of the classic combos that you have in this meta for Rogue is to go with the Azharan Vessel plus Gone Fishing to get yourself 12, 12 worth of stats for six mana. It's very, very efficient, but is it optimistic enough at this point, or do we need to go for like the really crazy outs with Jackpot at this point? I mean, normally it it's so good when you prep it on turn three or you play with Trickster, but now it's like already turn seven. So it's getting like kind of, kind of a little bit slow. The stash build is still very weak for Yarla. It's just having that Chaos Nava and the Wolf. Yeah. So, I mean, Gone Fishing in general is still looking quite decent here. So you can combine it with the Fessel. I wouldn't mind it. He's just really looking for that Trickster. I, I still want him at some point to play the Shroud, get the Jackpot and hope to just hit some really good spells in combination with the Shroud. I mean, that's the uh, the panic button, right? Because instead of going for the guaranteed 12 throw on this turn, you can go for uh, getting down the shroud in order to try and draw your tricks to just playing the jackpot as well, actually. Even throwing in a gone fish if you wanted to. Uh, but as Pino throws down uh, the emote to get his opponent to speed up a bit. I mean, this is pretty classic Yala, though, right? He talks all this talk about how he doesn't rope anymore, but we know how he really is. Quite okay or decent draw with a one mana on Nixia. I don't know, that wicked step from Jarla just feels so bad, like into a 2 3, like dealing that much damage. And he yeah. didn't get the second part of the the vessel going as well. And I mean, Onyxia is gonna make the board wide. I think it's gonna be a ramp for Fino or a draw. Just getting two more cards going on this board. Yeah, I think draw is reasonable because even though he's got a very full hand, it's a pretty bad hand he actually has right now. Most of these cards you don't really want to play. But these options, oh, man. Oh man, Onyxia, Kazakuzan, like they're both so game winning. I mean, Onyxia on itself is just so good against Rogue. Like yeah. it always it will take the board over it. It has so, it's so hard to deal with for Rogue. So I definitely really like the line uh, or the pickup, but also Kazakuzan was looking spicy as well. Very spicy. Maybe he'll make an appearance later on. Uh, but a prep is not a bad pickup actually here for Yala because he has plenty of value right now He just needs uh, time to play that or cheapening effects, which that prep does offer him. So uh, prep pyro face Yeah, that's what I saw as well. <laughs> I didn't like it, but I was looking at it as well Oh, from the against odds. odds, that's a complete board clear, right? Yeah. Everything dies. I mean, it's also killing your own minions, so that's a bit the sad part. You can combine it with Shroud and Gaunt, or you combine it with Gaunt Fishing afterwards, get the Fessoma going in combo with Maestras, and it's a very decent play. It's gonna be a, maybe a very key card into the stash pool, though, for Yarla. Good point. Yeah, of course, with the, uh, the Contraband Stash and Tess as well, all of these non-rogue cards that you're playing over the course of the game will be a replay later on as well. Uh, which will allow you, I think, as you were leading up to, some nice board clear on a lot of these minions. But that's the problem with Anixia, right? It's an 8-8 that summons a bunch of 2-1s. None of them have an odd attack value, so none of them would be dying to be against all odds. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit hard to say how good this against all odds are. Like, you have no idea what Fino has in his deck. Yeah. They're random dragons. Like, 
how the numbers are going to look like. It's, it's very hard to say, but this is just the only way for Yarla to go. He needs to get the board, but he's still having to deal 40 on damage. And oh, one mana Meligos as well. Another refill there as well for Fino once again. He didn't even play the composting, but look at this hand. It's just spicing up so much. Yeah, this is just the, the greatest hits of all the dragons of cards though. He's getting all the bang. It's like, yeah, you know, the Nos Dormu's not great, the Emerald Drake not amazing either, but Malagos alone can just completely fix that problem. Because he's also got the nuts in his deck, right, to get himself more minions, more cards drawn as well. It's still just looking so tough for Yala. Yeah, and actually, the little bit of the problem is his board is full here. I actually, I actually think he didn't want to get this many nuts, <laughs> but he got the nuts. He's trying to just use the mana here a little bit more. Might just, I mean, I think you just ramp, like there's nothing to draw here. Might consider dreaming the Maestro. It's not your main priority dream, but it's getting some cards out to exactly, make a board yeah. space. Dream Maestro, maybe even like Nightmare, one of your own minions. I don't know, dude. Like you just mm. need some way to dump these cards and draw through your deck because the real big hit is here. Uh, realistically, it's like Alex Straza, right? In order to deal eight damage to the face, just to catch your opponent by surprise because there's very, very limited healing in the road. Yeah, and even look at this board. Like, Fino's board is not even good, but Charla just needs to kill these, things, like, little things. The 12 lives, struggling. But this is a turn Yarla could take over. I mean, if he just, he has three decent traits on board, a little, like, spell, it, it could True. make the difference. All right, so in terms of the minions on the other side of the board, odd attack values, not so much, right? <laughs> Only the, uh, the sidekick <laughs> is offering you any value there, so... I mean, this uh, stash is really just looking kind of negative for him. It's working against him more so than for him. That's always the hard thing when you play the jackpot rogue and you put these hard removals in, like the twisting nethers against all lots, and then yeah, yeah. you're like, yeah, I'm just going to kill my own board as well. It's not really giving me that tempo. I only see Shroud as like the quite obvious play here for Jarla. Like, he can also pick up um, a bit more extra value, maybe. Needs to, yeah, me. It's Even then, like, spell. what do you get off the Shroud? Like, Trickster's not really good enough here anymore. rabbitoa has been played. Mr. Smite isn't in the list. There's not much to work with. Chaos Nova, I suppose, and hope that that's good enough. Yeah, it seems like he's just going for that and then ending with the Vessel. The Prep Vessel, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, it really does sting to use the stash before you've played all your aggressive cards, all the cards that actually develop board for you, because with still uh, Stand Against Darkness in hand, Pyroblast you could kind of put under that umbrella as well. All of those still in hand mean that this stash is very underwhelming. But he has gained back board once again. He's hanging in there by the skin of his teeth. Yeah, and I mean, it's a bit uh, scary now for Fino. Like, he can't kill any of these minions. I mean, he can f -wing and he's not maybe going to be too sad with what he discards, but do you even want to do that? Like Onyxia is a very <laughs> likely play, but yeah. you're not killing the minion, so part of the Onyxia value kind of goes away. What's your follow-up? Like, say you discard, I don't know, only the bad cards in hand, like the Dream, the Nightmare. You have some good plays, but there's some room for this to go wrong, right? If you discard some of your cheap minions. Yeah, I think the only card he really doesn't want to discard is the, the Drake, the 4 mana 7 uh, Emerald Drake, because it's quite good on this board, I would say. He could even just coin Onyxia. Like, let's say you get scapped, okay? It's true. You just do it again, next turn. Oh, I thought it was going definitely number two. I would not have agreed with that play. That one, not so much. I think only the big Death King lovers will have loved to see that play. <laughs> All right, mm. two and a three, uh, three health minion on the board means that Yala can get the honorable kill, discover himself a spell from another class. I mean, with two of you always have hope, right? You always have like, okay, it's not over. Maybe I can get that one spell getting me here back in the game, but... It's, it's so, so hard for Yarla to have any really, like, Fino will just keep coming. He will just keep having, like, new boards, and he's actually a little bit low in cards now, but with getting the hero power, the, dra the draw going, it's really, really hard to, to not hit for him. Yeah, obviously we can't see the discover options here, but I'm guessing from the fact that he hasn't picked anything yet, mm. they're not too good. There's probably not going to be a game-winning card, or it would have happened long ago. Yeah, and also these Pyroblasts there. The Silver Hand Recruit is just one of the weaker spells off to get from Jackpot. Quite interesting pickup there. One mana removal. There is the Trickster. Oh, there is also extra pickup. <laughs> Zero mana <laughs> Pyro Blast. Let's go. I mean, he's not dead, right? He is dead. He Pyro Blasted himself oh, to the face. Yeah, that is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Huge win for Fino. I like it. Taking it up on game one, the Prestor Druid 
doing its job, and Yala struggling already. One game away, crowning Pino as our victor already. Yeah, and that's the hard part sometimes about the jackpot rope. Like, if you don't have that fast spell, if you don't have, like, really any strong opener with your nulls, you're just going to be too slow, and a, and a deck like Drew just punishes that. Fino had a great opening go, like, really, really strong into the lady. And, yeah, from that point for the jackpot rogue, it's, it's just too hard to kind of get back in the game. Well, speaking of the jackpot rogue, that is going to be what is up next for Fino. Do not let your eyes deceive you. It's not a mage versus a warrior here. It is going to be uh, the disguised warrior here for Fino, getting himself wild poor null in the starting hand. Double wild poor null with the cutlass. And Come on, let's hear it in the Fino. mirror. Double null in the mirror. I mean, that's literally just what you want to look for. And actually, Garla queued the mage. He didn't queue the rogue. He so got I got fainted. <laughs> Also, this is one of the matchups that is the like one of the more favorable matchups for Rogue, I would say. This matchup is quite tough for the mage. And, <laughs> oh my god, he hits the shroud and he gets the discount. He can play the shroud next turn. The nulls are gonna be zero. Drawing two cards. Whoa. And then at a turn two. I gotta say, my favorite part of all of this is whenever there's a good draw, hearing Hunter Race just gasp in the background. <laughs> that really makes it for me. <laughs> He's even greeting into here. I mean, this is a very good play because he can oh hit a neutral card God. and he hits another hit on the shroud. That's he doesn't disgusting. even have to pay anything else. And even if he hits a neutral card, it's still going to be 2 0 nulls. Turn 2. 2 0 mana. Nulls down on the board already. I think this one might be over quite quickly. Yala on the big spell mage with no barbaric sorceress in hand, no Belinda in hand, no way to fight back against this. Even with these gnolls nerfed down to three attack instead of four, he's gonna start dying really quickly. I mean, even if he would have these, like at this point, it's just too slow. Like the, the, the tempo is so, so high here from Fino. Like that's just the one thing the mage struggles against. If the tempo is too high in the first three turns, afterwards it has reasonable recover phases, but it needs to get that time to, to, to get to the big spell and cheat these out. So what are we thinking? If you go for the Starfish, obviously you're leaving yourself fairly vulnerable to a, uh, a value trade from the high health and all. But I think realistically, like, okay, say you trade away the Drake Fire Amulet what instead. What are you even looking to hit here that makes your play any better on the following turn? Yeah, this is really sad. Like, this is the struggle of the mage. Like, if it is behind on board, the, the cards it runs, the supportive cards are just very, very weak in getting minions off the board. And they're just taking one minion off the board. They're not going to take three minions off the board. And that's just the problem. Like, he can have a null and trade, or, and trade one of the nulls away from Fino, but that's just it. Really delivering here. I mean, I saw him toying with the coin even, which would maybe... Uh make me think he's going for a Arnie oh, play. Sure. Do you see any kind of value there uh, in going for, like, I don't know, a spell, I suppose? Because there's not really too many minions left to play at the start here that Arnie could counter. Yeah, and also, what can you do? Yarla is just he's trying to trade. What are you even trading for? A random two drop? The spammy is actually decent. Spammy's good. That's probably the best thing he could get there. Yeah. Setting up the spammy here as well. So, actually, he's going to kill two minions next turn. Oh, and more damage being added to the board there. I mean, it's still gonna die to the spammy, but it's more damage. It's also really good in the session in this matchup because it's more damage means like mage going lower on life. It's it has no healing, it has only a bit of armor, and that's just it. But this spammy, I have to say, I don't think there was anything else that Jarlak could get that won't get him a little bit back in the game at least. And so obviously this is a very low life total stabilizer. But Yala is kind of stabilizing here, right? What are the next few turns looking like for him to turn this one around? Ooh, and that is the one draw I think Yala was really looking for. But okay. now he can maybe cheat. I mean, Fino is going to play around it because you know at turn six you need to play around the Barbaric to not have too many spells in your hand. So I really expect at least Fino to drop the, the tooth to not make another spell too cheap. and. I mean, he has 15, he has the Barbaric next turn, he's probably gonna ping the Null here, yeah. maybe trade, maybe not. Um, it's looking, looking tough, and of course for Yarla, but after that early game, he's actually in a decent recovery. Okay. The trickster off the top, meaning that the blood in the water could come down on this turn. And you can potentially just send it face if you don't feel like trading. And I gotta tell you, Fino never feels like trading. He actually does it. Oh. He deals the damage in the middle. But <laughs> if he's me. gonna deal, uh, if he's gonna now lose on three damage, he, we will. He will never forget. He's never like, hear it. Down. I didn't go face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no play for Jarla. He just has to do it, right? He just has to barbaric. 
I don't think. Yeah. I mean, the, the one other thing you could consider is there is the uh, the mailbox dancer in hand, right? Which means that you could play that, give them a coin, and hope to copy it next turn, or sorry, swap the cost for next turn. But they could just always play it, right? I mean, it's also the town you get here, which is quite valuable. Like That's seven true. HP in the town is literally what he needs now, and he got the box, which huge. I mean, if there is an ice barrier pop up, if there's a counter pop up, and it clears the board, there's actually potential to maybe find a comeback. It hit also. A good spell, so it's only two mana. Oh, a wicked stab off the top as well. Yeah. This is gonna be so close because Yala's oh, just oh. outside that range of just dying to wicked stab plus the shadow it's, spirit. Oh. But he has to stop this damage right now. This rune has to be game winning in its own right. Are we ready, TwitchCon, for some nice rune of the art mage? Okay. okay, okay. That's the start. He needs to get these secret pops out. So I think a counter spell or an ice barrier is kind of yeah. what he's looking for at this point. Uh, not so much. He's getting a lot of card draw, but he doesn't need that. He just needs health right now more than Ooh, anything else. Some secret pops. We don't see them on our perspective, but two secrets there that is. It cannot kind of be better, to be honest, for Yarla. Like, these are literally what, what he needs. And you see, with two wicked stabs, it's going to get close very fast. I expect him to counter the spell here, because that's just what you're scared of now. Okay, you could start with the Gone Fish, I suppose. Still leave yourself the possibility for uh, the Tooth. Uh, sorry, uh, the Wicked Stab into the Tooth in the next couple of turns. Yeah, Fino has to respect the counter spell. Kind of. And the Yakani as well, right? Oh, it wasn't counter spell. Quite works? expensive there for Fino, actually, because oh now God. he doesn't get the draw. It's just a discover. Yeah. So he's not getting the draw here. Maybe it was just Wicked Stab there to be. Uh -huh. He's just looking for that out of double wicked steps, I think, at this moment. But now he's thinking, okay, if it wasn't counter spell, that makes it that much more likely it's Ooh. ice barrier, right? And so by going face here, he's, he's just testing it. He's he said it's not barrier. ice barrier. Okay, it's not ice barrier. That gives Fino so much more room. Like now, the wicked step in combination with the tooth, just it might get there. He also, I believe, picked Krabatoa as the card to get off the bottom of his deck with the dredge. Which means, you know, next turn, if there's no health gain, no taunt, he could just have lethal right there on the spot. Yeah, and the Skeps just being quite good at gonna resetting the board anyway next turn. So I think that is very, very important as well here for Fino. Like, if there is no ice barrier, just Skeps can just finish it sure. off. But of course, Yala is gonna have one or two turns to <laughs> do something himself here. Also worth saying as well, actually, I did forget the Akrani is still in minion counter, mm -hmm. so Kravato is not actually playable next turn. It's instead gonna have to be, what, the Scabs first, then the Kravato, then the two, plus the, uh, this, uh, the Wicked Stab on the turn after, which means Fino's still got a little way left to go before he can actually get lethal. Yala's still in this one. Yeah, and I mean, I expect Yala will just end up training here his amulet, because what do you do with two amulets here anyway? You wanna get the armor, so... He is deciding, oh, he, I mean, he's feeling the skeps maybe, and that's why he's considering jamming some cards right, away yeah. to okay. not get wrecked by a skep overdraw. That's smart. There we go. I mean, Fino already knowing there is no ice barrier here, so can't just continue to hit in the face, and skeps is so, so good here for him. Yeah, I mean, at this point, what are we looking at? Explosive runes, uh, Oasis ally. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. So yeah. a minion will probably not do much anyway. Even a Krabatau is kind of dead, uh, yeah, dead here for Fino. And yeah, what is Jarla looking for now? I mean, he can replay the box. That's he can, true. <laughs> he can play Reckless, which is amazing here. That's what he was doing. He was just setting up against Caps, knowing Reckless was kill the board. I think Reckless into Okani is just fine. It seems quite good here. Yeah, as long as he's killing off these minions, he's happy. And that's exactly what he's doing. It's starting to look tougher and tougher for Fino. Off the best possible start with this deck. Finally showing those signs of running out of gas. And Okani comes right back down. And I'd have to guess, goes right back to minion again, right? I don't know. I feel like it's spell because you have explosive runes. A crap doesn't really that's hurt true. anyway. So I think at this point, you really are scared of just dying to, let's say, double wicked step. Which <laughs> is yeah. kind of the case. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, I'm thinking what Fino wants to do here because... Next turn, he has potential level with double wicked step. So is yeah. it time to just go hero power teeth in the face and you just... Oh. I mean, I think this is the right play because it's setting up lethal. He Seven blocks Tokani and he just hopes this is it because it might just be the game here. If if Jarla can do anything here, gaining armor or like killing uh, Fino himself, this will just be... Oh. Yet <gasps> that is something though. The torn Oh the man, top. but is it enough? I mean, you have... 
if you have like you, you know so much mana available right so do you look for the armor do you play Sir Finley I would really consider I, Sir Finley here and get the get the armor in I think the play I would consider most heavily here is go for second flame first because then the only spells left in your hand are 10 mana right and then mm -hmm. Barbaric Sorceress has a really good shot of letting you go yeah. Sorceress plus the Drake Fire Amulet, which can get you another taunt in addition to that. But do you know that he's still gonna die because of the hero power from Skeps to that? To 12 damage, yes. I mean, I'm saying from his uh -huh. perspective, but yeah, I think you're right. It's not gonna work, is it? I mean, at this point, mana just seems to not really matter for Fino. So I was really wondering, like, I think I really, really, if he will get armor in there, isn't he just winning the game? I don't think Fino will ever recover there. I mean, he took the risk. He's saying, I'd rather get the kill next turn rather than maybe mess around with gain some armor, hope to get there. But I think you might be right. The doubling up on the uh, rank three wicked stats, I think is going to do it. Yes. Wow. Fino actually, actually going to take it. Had an insane opener. And there we go. Fino taking it here. The Thais Tavern. Incredible performance. He told me at the start of the day, it's either an 0-1 drop or he's going to win the whole thing. And after he won that first series, I think we all knew what was going to happen. Fino, back on top. It's been a while yes. since he's been competing in these kind of tournaments, but he's still got what it takes. He's still got what it takes. And he just brings the comfortable decks for him. I mean, that's so important in these tournaments to, like, go with what you're comfortable with. And he did it. Should we call our champion to the stage, gentlemen? I think we should. Sounds like a great idea. Fino, congratulations on being our first victor in the Thais Tavern. Please, sir, come to the stage because we have got something very special for you that just happens to have Thais's name on it. The crowd doing Fino the honor of applause. He is right at the back of the stage. He's got a long walk to victory, but my word, does he deserve it. And boys, just as you were saying, this is a man who retired from competitive play a few years ago. He has a very dedicated following on his Twitch stream and clearly a, quite a few of them have come out to support him in force today. And that's what TwitchCon's really all about. Uh, uh, boys, uh, what do you have to say about this man? I mean, amazing. I, I think he did what is so important in Hearthstone and people always forget, like, bring what you're comfortable with. Often people see, oh, that deck is doing so well on ladder. I have to bring it and then let them down. And he just sticks to what he trusts and it's just working. Hello, Fino. How excited are you to be here today winning once again? Yeah, well, I, I already planned a vacation to come here before Tyson invited me to the tournament. So it was just a pleasant surprise to me that I qualified. And obviously I'm going to win it because I don't care, so <laughs> the less you care, the more likely you are to do good. So that's what happened. So you didn't care about your fellow finalist being a, 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 well, a runner-up in the World Championships? No, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm way better than him, so it's, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. And how did you have courage in keeping it traditional with your decks today? Uh, I mean, those are just the decks that I play every day. Uh, I play them good. I just spend my mind every turn and it just works out. And that's what I did, and it worked out. Well, Tice has got something very special for you. Would you like to see not. it? <laughs> oh, he does. If you would like to step forward and please accept your prize. It is the Tice Tavern Tankard. Go ahead and put it in. Everyone, give it up for your for first Fino. Tice Tavern champion. It is Fino. We now have our first winner in the Thais Tavern Finals, but we're only halfway done, everyone. The final two lobbies of our Battleground Final with eight players are coming up next. You guys are watching Twitch Rivals live from TwitchCon Amsterdam. We're going to take a break while here in Amsterdam, we celebrate with Fino. <laughs> this ends now.